Hey, it's Alex and welcome to Vegan with a Passport. I've been wanting to go to Portland, Oregon and return back to Vancouver, British Columbia for a while, but under one condition, I'm not allowed to fly one way. That means I'm going to have to navigate the North American Rail for the first time ever. Join me on this journey as I take one bus and three trains to complete this adventure. By utilizing the rail tracks that Amtrak uses, the journey would take 2,300 miles from Phoenix, Arizona, all the way up to Vancouver, British Columbia. All right, let's go ahead and get rolling. Now, despite Phoenix, Arizona being the fifth largest city in the United States, unfortunately, there's no train station here. So that meant I either A, had to take a Flitz bus to Tucson, Arizona, or B, use one of Amtrak services to bus to a closer train station in Maricopa, Arizona. However, due to the higher cost of the train ticket alone, I decided just to head to Tucson. However, this trip was already started on the wrong foot. With Flitz bus overbooking tickets, and my early morning bus ended up turning into a late afternoon bus, I was just thankful to make it to Tucson on time to catch my train. So, with my Tucson foodie plan out of the window, I quickly rushed to a vegan burger shop and quickly rushed to the train station and also got a sandwich to go just in case if there wasn't food on board, which I was thankful to get. Trust me, you'll see why later. Hello, the Texas Eagle train. This is the train that's going to take us from Tucson, Arizona to Los Angeles, California. The first out of three trains on this rail venture. As soon as I got settled, I immediately ran to the dining car hoping that I would have a meal considering it was included in my roomette fare. By the way, if you're wondering what a roomette is, it's basically a berth component with doors. Unfortunately, since it was after 10 p.m., they decided to close the dining car for the night and I was told to immediately go to the cafe car as that would be closing in a few minutes too. Hoping I'll be able to score a vegan tamale, one of the most popular items on board, unfortunately, they were sold out. And I was told that towards the end of a route, the most popular items tend to be sold out. The veggies and hummus dip combo was also sold out, however, the Asian noodle bowl was still available. The bowl included vermicelli noodles, crunchy amadame, and raw vegetables including broccoli, bell peppers, and purple cabbage. And it came with a sweet and spicy plum dressing. After adding the dressing, the bowl wasn't bad. Although I did find some of the bites that have a stronger and questionable ginger taste, while the other bites had a more sweeter taste. However, the vegetables surprisingly tasted fresh, which I wasn't expecting for a train. After chowing that down, I went to bed, or so I tried at least. Now I've been on sleeper trains throughout Europe, South Asia, and also Southeast Asia, and this was by far the rockiest train I have ever been on. Ever. It was the first time on a train that I had been getting awakened in the middle of the night. After getting 6 hours of interrupted sleep, my body was ready to wake up at 5.30am and we woke up in the middle of Nowhereville, California. And we were greeted by this intriguing view of windmills and mountains. I alone with a couple of the passengers then went to go get breakfast, but then we learned that since our original arrival time was at 5.35 a.m., that breakfast wouldn't be served despite the delay. Thank goodness I bought that sandwich. By the way, regardless of your diet, I really highly recommend you bring snacks and if you're able to, an insulated lunchbox or a cooler. I then took a shower, which I also learned by the way the water source is the same as the drinking water. Should I have had that for breakfast instead? I then arrived back to my room with the seats put in their sitting position and enjoyed our approach into Los Angeles at nearly 8 a.m. in the morning or two and a half hours late. As delays with Amtrak are very common and with an original four hour connection to my next train, which would have left at 9.51 a.m., I decided to spend the day and night in Los Angeles instead to secure my roommate. Before leaving the train station, I quickly headed over to the Amtrak Metropolitan Lounge to check out the vegan snacks. There were two trail mixes, a Cliff Bar, Lemon Bars, Peanut Butter Packets, Sea Salt Chips, and also vegan barbecue chips. 
Afterwards, I left the train station and enjoyed my day in the Los Angeles area and all of the food offerings. The next morning, I said goodbye to my hotel and walked to the train station. Hello, the Coast Starlight. This train goes from Los Angeles all the way to Seattle, Washington, a 35 hour journey. However, we have some plans in Portland, Oregon, so we're gonna make the journey 30 hours instead. Shortly after our 9.51 a.m. departure, they came around and took our lunch reservations. I was too impatient for lunch, so I went ahead and already started munching on my lunch box. First victim of the day, this Monty's vegan chicken sandwich. My goodness, it's delicious. We eventually reached our first rest stop in Santa Barbara, California. This was great news for me, not just because I got a chance to get outside, but also because as soon as I got back in the train and it started rolling again, it was time for my lunch. The timing of my lunch was also great because that meant that my lunch would be met with stunning views of the Pacific Coast. As there's a kitchen on board this route, that means that your dishes can be customized as needed. Therefore, the burger, the chili dishes, and the salads can be made vegan. As the chili is vegan by default, I went ahead and got a baked potato with chili and removed the bacon and dairy products. Overall, the dish wasn't bad. The baked potato was cooked well throughout and was easy to cut into. And the chili was soft to medium firm. However, I personally thought that the chili could have used some seasoning. But hey, considering that we're on a moving commuter train, I thought they did a fantastic job. Lunch also comes with dessert, but unfortunately, there aren't any vegan desserts on board, nor was there fresh fruit when I inquired about it. I am very grateful for the vegan options on board, I truly am. However, I didn't find a baked potato alone to be filling. Everyone's entrees looked to be on the smaller end portion-wise, and the desserts were also small. We eventually entered Northern California and I couldn't help but continue to keep my eyes glued to the window. Reaching North California also meant that it was dinner time. If you haven't noticed by now, dining is communal and is part of the experience, but there's not an empty table yet, you'll be seated with random passengers. In addition to an entree and, well, the quote unquote dessert option that didn't exist for vegans, but whatever, I digress. For dinner, you'll also receive an appetizer and an alcoholic beverage. For my appetizer, I decided to go with the salad and I omitted the cheese. And it was, well, salad. It did come with balsamic vinaigrette though. If you want to spice things up and feel a little fancy with your appetizer options, Really, the only other option is to order the skewers and remove the mozzarella. So therefore, it will just be onion, dry, cherry tomatoes. No hate on tomatoes. It sounds delicious, actually. Anyway, for my main dish, I decided to order the plant-based rigatoni bonganese. When I asked about making the dish without cheese, they actually told me that they no longer make the dish with cheese, making it vegan by default. My dinner partner for the night wasn't vegan or vegetarian and ordered the same dish and when he bit into it, he said and I quote, wow, that's pretty dang good. And I gotta agree with him. The bonganese had somewhat of a meaty taste to it, it was well seasoned with herbs, and the texture of the grounds were easy to chew but still had that slight firmness you have with meaty pasta sauces. Also, the sauce in general was creamy. As we entered the Bay Area and the sun began to set, I started to get hungry. After munching on okra chips, a matcha croissant, and some mixed nuts, I decided to head down to the cafe car to get some complimentary hot water to make ramen with. And with that, good night. We will wake up in Oregon. Well, I would think at least. Although I didn't get a full night's rest, I definitely slept way better than the night before and I woke up on the northern border of California. 
How are we still in California? And to my surprise, I woke up to snow on the ground and on the mountains. Despite it being only 6.30 in the morning, I was definitely okay staying awake for these views. I quickly took a shower and ran to the observation car with less than a minute to spare to see the crossing from California into Oregon, which is technically crossing through a tunnel, but the views of entering Oregon were gorgeous. 21 and a half hours later, we were finally in Oregon. Now with that out of the way, let's have our first meal in Oregon, shall we? Unlike the lunch and dinner options, which are clearly labeled on the menu, I found the breakfast options to look limiting at first sight. After having to basically assemble a jigsaw puzzle to figure out the vegan options from the different menu items, I found there were grits, oatmeal, which you can add fruit to, there's also an egg omelet, which I'm pretty sure you can just ask for a vegetable hash instead with potatoes. But to put the customization to the test, I decided to ask for a quesadilla with no cheese and only vegetables on the inside. I ended up with a quesadilla stuffed with bell peppers and I also got a side of salsa and potatoes. And I actually did find the quesadilla to be tasty with the salsa. I also asked for a bowl of mixed berries, which ended up just being a bowl of strawberries. I'm not sure if this was just whatever is on board type of situation, but I do have to say those strawberries were fresh, sweet, and delicious. I also did order some black tea. However, unbeknownst to me, it came with a side of honey, so just be cautious when ordering. After enjoying my breakfast, I finally got a chance to go to the observation car and relax and enjoy the beautiful views of Oregon. Also, be prepared to get close to people. This is Amtrak after all, where everything is pretty much communal. As we were pulled aside in Eugene, Oregon, due to a freight train taking priority to our train, it was time for the last meal. I ordered the Sweet Earth plant-based burger, which I customized to be vegan by removing the cheese. And it came with a small side of kettle potato chips. Also, this time after our order, I actually got my order slip back, which had the word vegan checked on the paper, so that it's something to look for after you order your food. The burger had somewhat of a meaty taste and it was delicious. I just wish my lunch overall was a little more larger when it came to portion sizes. As lunch comes with dessert and I had the mixed berries this morning, quote unquote mixed berries at least, I decided to ask if they had any more fruit left over from breakfast that I could have for dessert and I was able to score some more of those delicious sweet strawberries. And right after finishing lunch, Portland quickly approached and I got off the train to enjoy some delicious eats in the city for the week. After enjoying my week in Oregon, it was time to head up to Vancouver, British Columbia. To do this, we'll need to take the Amtrak Cascades, which is a train route which starts in Portland, Oregon, and conveniently ends in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. This is the last eight hours of our 50 hour cross country train journey. Unlike the first two trains, this train doesn't have a dining car. There's only a cafe car, which you can purchase snacks from and dine in at your own leisure. For my first meal, I ended up going to the cafe car and just asking for some complimentary hot water. 
And yes, here I am trying to cook ramen again on a train while it's going at 80 miles per hour. As I was enjoying my ramen, the train stopped in Seattle, Washington for 35 minutes and I'd be lying if I was tempted to go get food at a nearby restaurant, but I knew I should just stay next to the train. Instead, I decided to head back to the cafe cart and got the vegan tamale. I found the tamale to be okay on its own, however with the salsa, it was delicious. And then I continued to enjoy the views of the Pacific coast until sunset. And eventually we cross into Canada. Victory! And finally an hour after crossing the border, we arrived in Vancouver, British Columbia at 11 p.m. And what better way to celebrate than with pancakes and a mocktail to toast to? Afterwards, I ended up enjoying the food, the coast, and the city for the next several days. And then my trip ended with a flight going from Vancouver back to Phoenix, Arizona. And we ended up exactly where we started, right above the bus station at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. And standing in that exact same spot gave me an overwhelming feeling of accomplishment. And I am already looking forward to taking my next North American train adventure. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed, be sure to stick around for those Vancouver and Portland food videos and also for any other vegan travel adventures. And until next time, bye!